we have Mataus Nicolau versus Matt Snell. Mataus, man, is on a currently on a five fight win streak. His last loss came to Dustin Ortiz. That was back in 2018. Uh, even though he's on a five fight win streak, he's been barely getting by with close wins. Yeah. Hey, one thing I noticed on his record, it looked like when he lost the fight to Dustin Ortiz, he went and fought at Future FC and Brave CF, then came back and fought. And so he's on a three fight win streak inside the actual UFC. I think that's very smart because mm. we never see that. Remember we were talking about that the other day? Like these guys lose and then it just started a chain reaction of you losing a bunch of fights to get kicked out and then you'll never be back more than likely. So. Yes. Yeah, so he won a couple fights outside the UFC, then came back. That was smart. And now, but that first fight with Manel Cape, I ain't gonna lie, that was a coin toss. A lot of people actually don't feel like he probably should have gotten that one. And then he had a, a good fight with Tim Elliott, but with Tim Elliott, you never really know what you're getting. And I don't really know this David Vorak, Vorak person. Hey, his record is pretty good though. It's solid. So that's he got three solid wins in a row. But now he's fighting Matt Snell and. I guess the nickname Danger is kind of accurate because you just never know what version of him you're going to get. But one thing I will say is, outside of his actual skills, I can't bet on somebody whose number one trait is they can come back from the dead and win with Hail Mary. Like, I just can't. Not even that, but he alternates wins and losses. It was some fights he was winning and then he lost out of nowhere. The Brandon Revolve fight, he was winning. He hurt Brandon and then just to get submitted. And he didn't even get hurt. The funny thing is, he hurt Brandon and went in and got guillotined. It was kind of like weird because it's not like Brandon hurt him with a punch and, and submitted him. But just think about what was he going to do to Brandon? Let's well, be he, honest. Well, he did hurt him though. No, he hurt him, but it's, I don't think Brandon ever been knocked out before. I think Brandon was going to recover anyway. But I I'm, think, I just, I hate to say this, and Matt, he showed an, a ton of heart in his last fight against Sue. But I think Matt is a little bit overrated. And I think we kind of like look past, we overlooked the fact that he was losing against Sue because he came back and won the fight. Hey, that fight was only two rounds. Why did I think that fight was three rounds? A lot happened. But hey, can you look up the numbers of time he was knocked down in that fight? I'm going to tell you this, man. When somebody get knocked down. They say once, but sometimes UFC stats don't really have the right number of knockdowns. Because we've seen people knock down three or four times. They might say one. Well, there were a few times where he was stumbled, but not necessarily knocked down. I got you. Right. He must have got stumbled six or seven times. Oh, yes. If not eight. I think I stopped counting at some point. And I'm sorry, man, but that has to do something to you. Yeah, he was able to come back on Sue Mudarji because Sue started making bad decisions. And another thing is Sue don't have the best takedown defense. See, this is where when he get in the top five in the uh, flyweight division against guys who can stuff takedowns like Brandon Moreno, them guys, man, like, he's not going to have a chance. Sue had to fight one, and he got taken down, and he got finished. And, man, the way Sue started throwing the elbows, and it was just hurting him every single time, this is what worries me. Matt Snell's fight IQ was so non-existent that Sue was able to keep doing the same exact thing over and over and over again. His awareness. His yeah. On the feet. His awareness on the feet was so bad, and... Skill-wise, Matt Snell has a lot of skills. He can submit you. He got power. It's not crazy power, but he can knock people out. We've seen him drop a lot of people, but we also see him lose a lot of those fights where he hurt people. I don't think that Matt Snell has a bad chin. Matt Snell has bad, he has bad striking defense, and he has this thing where he gets overly zealous in exchanges, and it causes him to get caught more than he should. And then that leads to getting dropped and getting finished or getting knocked out cold and just different outcomes where he was just winning or the fight was even and now he's beat out of nowhere. You know who did that dude? Cody Garbrandt. I wonder how old, how old is Matt? Look, look and see how old he is. 32. He's only See, 32. and I was going to say Dustin Poirier did that early on in his career. He made decisions like that. He was overzealous. But the thing is, Dustin was a lot younger than he was. And the thing is, I think Dustin always had a higher ceiling than Matt. Matt Matt has a lower ceiling than Dustin, so it's kind of hard to compare him to. But what works out for him is that he's in a division, in the flyweight division, where you only need two or three good wins and you could be in the top. Because the flyweights is kind of like you got your champion and then you got everybody else who they kind of beat each other. And then you got the other people who just would never even be in the top. So he's luckily in a division where two or three solid wins, he might be fighting the Kai Kara France. 
or fighting one of these top guys, you know. But I just don't trust the fight IQ, man. And unfortunately for him, he fight Nikolau, who is a very smart fighter. This dude, is, I'm not saying he's a 10 out of 10 in every category, but he's one of those guys who's good enough everywhere to where he know how to get the job done. Like he's one, he got enough striking, he got enough striking defense. He got enough takedowns, he got enough takedown defense. He got enough jujitsu, he got enough jujitsu defense to where he got enough cardio. You know who he kind of remind me of, even though this guy's bigger and taller, he kind of fight like uh, Alexander Racket a little bit. It kind of looked like him too, a little bit. Low the key. tattoos and the leg kicks. Yeah. And he really don't take a lot of chances. So I got a question. Why did Max Neal ask for this fight? Because he he wanted this fight. In his post-fight interview, after Suma Darji, he specifically asked for this fight. But this guy is on a win streak, but he's one of the least known fighters in the UFC. It's hard to even go find his fights online. I well, think I, I think a lot of people underrate uh, Nikolai. I think a lot of people see him as beatable until they step in with him because he don't really is not okay i'm not gonna lie he does have some knockout power especially in that left hook yeah because he's been dropping everybody with left hook but at the same time he ain't the most intimidating fighter he don't talk a lot he's not really going for knockouts he don't take chances i think matt Schnell is looking at him as if i can go out there and get an easy win but this dude is on a win i mean i just don't understand I can't forget like he didn't get finished by dustin though Ortiz back in, I know this was years ago, but I think Matt Schnell looking at that as if, oh yeah. Cause what happened was, uh, before he fought Dustin Ortiz, Nikolai, he beat Lewis, uh, Lewis Smoker. And after he beat Lewis, he said, I want somebody in the top 10. And then when he fought Dustin, Dustin was just too much for him. So I think Matt Schnell looking at him uh, as if he's been in and out of the UFC. And also dude, when he fought somebody in the top 10, he lost. So I'm gonna be that next guy he fight in the top 10 who he can beat. But that's a high risk, low reward fight because I don't think Matt Schnell is going to win this fight. And what do you gain from winning? You gain nothing. This does nothing for your ranking almost because people really don't know Nikolaou. It does. He's ranked number seven. But nobody knows that. But I understand what you're saying, but the UFC knows that. I'm saying the UFC knows that. And if he can beat, the, the UFC knows if Matt can beat Nikolaou, then he's going to fight somebody in the top five. I, I see. So, uh, like, and it, so who, who else is in? Hold on. Let me see. Because they said he's number six in the world. So now, basically, if he can, if Matt Schnell can beat him, he might can get a rematch with Brandon Royval. Mm. He might can he might can get a, a fight against Pantoja or somebody. So okay, I, I guess that makes sense. But boy, for Matt Snell to win this fight, he got to clean up the striking defense. The striking is good. He's a good long rangey fighter, but when he does his thing where he chains three and four and five punches together, and he does that thing, you run forward and you throw left right left right left right. But then he gets caught in the middle of it and he get dropped and submit it or he gets knocked out cold and it's like it keeps happening i just want to see that cleaned up man because nicolau is not finna play that game wherever your your weakness is nicolau is going to keep the fight there and he's basically going to neutralize you and he gonna use his range he gonna be in and out with the movement like you said he got power in the left hook he got good leg kicks he gonna control the range and i don't think matt snell just gonna be able to take him down i know matt want a wild chaotic fight he might we might get one too because that's the only way he's gonna win this fight but Nikolai is not finna but then it. and that's what scares me because the way that matt can only win this fight first of all he can't get the fight to the ground you know before uh before Nikolai fought against lewis smoker his takedown defense was 100 percent. now it's 93 percent. so it went down a little bit but uh that's the way matt getting this fight to the ground and then he can't really take too much chances on he can't take too many chances on the feet because Nikolai got some sneaky power i could see i, I honestly think Nikolai's gonna win by knockout that's my prediction. I think the same thing. That's why I was trying to figure out why did Matt Snell take this fight? Because yeah. you're not dealing with somebody who can only win by one way. If you look at Nikolai's record, a lot of these fights were close. But let's be real, man. Manel Cape ate some hard punches. Tim Elliott. Yeah, but the, I, I understand what you're saying, but these fights, he arguably didn't win. I know. I hate to say it, but bro. some kind of way his style made the judges think he won. When you fight Matt Snell, you're going to drop Matt at least two or three times. I think, I'm going to be honest, I hate to say this, but... I think Nikolai can beat Matt Snell, but I think this is where it ends for him. Because I can't get past that you want you ask for Dustin Ortiz and then you got somebody in the top ten and you lost. And it wasn't really bad because he, he got caught with the head kick, but his hands was up. So it wasn't like he just got set up or anything. It was just a bad mistake he made when he didn't really protect his whole yeah, face. But he learned but, from that man. But at the same seven. time, I think these you having these close fights with Tim Elliott, Tim outstruck you. 
Uh, Manel arguably won. Most people think Manel won the fight. Yeah. The Vorak, he knocked Vorak down in the second round. That's what won him that fight. So I mean, everything else was close. So he's. I think Matt is looking at as if Matt is looking as if, dude, you're barely scraping by with these fights. I think I can beat you. That's smart. Okay, that makes sense. Now, what does Matt need to do to actually win, though? Because I see a lot of way. At the very least, Nikolai can win the decision, and that's being very nice. I think he might actually finish Matt, but for Matt to get dropped, I mean, not dropped, but rocked that many times against Sue, I just cannot look past that. Bro, that was in yeah, that was in a, July. That was in July. We can't act like there was no year ago or nothing like that. Just, I think it's, what can help him is the fact that he's unpredictable. Because, for example, like when uh, Matt fought against Brandon and Royval, first of all, he got crazy submissions. Why, why would you not try to submit him? But then you, get, you fight other people, man, and then they they take you down and you triangle them. So it's like, he's, it's, it's not the best formula to have. Obviously do for a fighter, in my opinion, but at the same time, it works sometimes for him. That might be something he could bring to the table, dude. He's unpredictable. You don't know, I don't think uh, Matt knows what he's gonna do when he fights. And then you combine it with the fact that when uh, Nikola fights, sometimes he don't pull the trigger. Sometimes he can fight real tentative. But he still got so much power. Even in those type of fights, Matt will get dropped out of nowhere. I know. He ain't got the awareness to avoid left hand. And I don't think Matt has a bad chin. I told you this with Cody Garbrandt. I don't think the chin is bad. The striking defense is bad. And then it leads to you getting He's definitely hit. been knocked out like three times, though. I know, but that's not because of a chin issue. Look at how that happened. He was rushing in, swinging left, right, left, right, left, right. Like, you know, when boxers or Muay Thai specialists chain their combinations together, it's calculated and it's, it's fluid. But he fights like somebody who's throwing four or five punches in a row like they're in a street fight. You just rushing forward. You know what he do? You know why he do that? He do that to compensate for, in my opinion, this is no disrespect for the lack of knockout power. Yeah. Because if you notice, a lot of fighters do that. Like, uh, Heather Lombard ain't got to do all that, man. No, but, but it's but certain. He, yeah. he does have power. He has some power, but I don't think he has. I don't think it's because of a lack of knockout power. I hate to say this, man. I don't mean no disrespect. I think it's because of a lack of coaching and training. Sometimes when you may be the best person in your gym or you're not at a at a place where there are real good strikers because that should be cleaned up. Like the stuff yeah. that he's doing is stuff that you should be getting out of your system at the amateur level or early in your career. You shouldn't be in your, I don't know how many fights he got in the Ultimate Fighter at this point, man. Uh, well, he was, well, he was on the Ultimate Fighter, but let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two. Man, you got 10 plus fights in the UFC and you're striking looks amateurish. You might have some power and you do some good things, but overall it looks amateurish. And then and you, and you want to tell you what hurts him the most, he gets rewarded even after he had a bad performance in his last fight. So the fact that he won that fight, he's not going to change his ways. I know. If you if you are a basketball team and you go out there and you you win a fight, well, you if you're a basketball team, you go out there and you win a close game and y'all perform bad and y'all don't play good team basketball, you're not going to get better. If you go out there and you keep winning in bad ways with bad tendencies. And eventually and I think that's what's hurting him, man, because he because every now and then he'll perform bad like he did in his last fight and he'll win. So that's the worst thing that can happen to you when you're winning, when you're uh, fighting bad. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. Because that easily could have and should have been a loss. All you have to do is change off the referee and they stop that fight halfway through it. Yeah, because just, who, it's too much damage. Because we just seen refs stop fight on the feet before when yeah. it's like not. And, and he got sat down several times. I don't know why they, they didn't yeah. call it knockdowns, but half of those was, I mean, literally yeah. a three-point stance. I think, honestly, I hate to say this, I don't think Matt has no chance in this fight. I don't think he can get the fight to the ground. I don't think he can stand up with uh, Nikolai. A lot of people won't even stand up with Nikolai, man. He's so, like, he's dangerous, but he's so calculated. But at the same time, I think this is, oh, this is where the Nikolai party ends oh yeah 100%. Uh, i don't think he's beating you, you're barely getting by these people man you're supposed to be finishing all these guys and these fights were too close to say you're that much better than them so something about it is but let me say this also manel is underrated manel is dangerous so it's like is that a bad thing that you barely won that fight and tim elliott we've talked about this so many times tim elliott does this thing where he'll show up against certain people and then other people he won't do it and he can make these fights closer Tim Elliott is, is the guy that almost submitted DJ, right? Yeah, yeah, in the five round. You just never know what you're going to get with this guy. So it's very difficult to kind of hold those close fights against him because he ultimately didn't judge the fights. But, you know, Matt can win. But this, this is the thing, and I'm going to round it out. Matt can win, 
but for the fight to play out in a way for Matt to win, it's too many. It's too many things. It's high risk. Yeah, it's too high risk, and there's too many chances of Matt getting finished along the way before he can come out on top. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like for Matt to win, he'll get dropped, and then he'll stand back up, and then he'll drop Nikolau, and it's just like you can't keep winning like that, man. At some point, even, let's say some kind of way he gets dropped two or three times to come back and win. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to do that again against Brandon Roy Vall? Is that going to work against Kai Kawa France? Is that going to work against oh, Pantoja? That's literally not going to work on nobody. Bro, you got to have a definitive way to get people out of there before you get dropped or rocked seven, eight times in a row. I just can't pick you, even though I think there's a chance he can win. It's just too much danger for him before it gets to that point. I just can't pick him. I'm sorry. Yeah, and the last thing I'm going to say is I'm looking at Matt Schnell, and I just noticed something. That's why he fights the way he do. He has... In the UFC, he has zero decision losses. So he's live by the sword, die by the sword type oh. of fighter. So that's why he might actually have a chance. I'm standing away from this fight, man. Like, he's not going to go out there and lose the way these other guys have been losing decisions. Even if it costs him a knockout loss. I think Matt's going to go out there and... But that ain't because he's going out on his shield because he wants to. Again, that's because of a lack of training and a lack of high-level training, is coaching, that, and, and striking. Is that also his, also his style, too, man. Like, the no decision losses. Because having a decision loss ain't the worst thing. No, but I'm saying the reason why he ain't been to a decision because some of yeah. these fights that even when he got knocked out, maybe you would have lost that round, but he don't understand what it takes to survive and get, and make it to the judges. You know, it's even if he gets dropped and he come back and win, I just can't bet on you if you're doing all that. I want to see clean wins, clean fights. I'm looking at his record and a lot of these, look, the Pantoja, he hurt Pantoja. Did you know that? Yeah. He hurt Pantoja and then turned around and got knocked out at the end of the first round. Brandon Royval, he hurt him. Turned around and got submitted out of nowhere. He could easily be on a three-fight losing streak right now. I like Matt. He's from Louisiana. But, man, you got to clean that stuff up, man. Because this is a winnable fight against Nikolau. But, dang. But this girl. ain't the fight to clean up, man. You can never outpoint Nikolau, you know. So, this ain't the fight to do it. I mean, this a dirty, messy fight. And then after this fight, clean things up. But, yeah, but if he get rewarded by winning, he ain't going to clean it up. And you ain't gonna be yeah. able to clean up against no Brandon Royval and Icar France. You definitely oh, yeah. not. It, look, if you think you're gonna get up to the highest level and and do that, imagine let's say some kind of way he make his way up. Let's say something happens and he step in short notice. If something happens, man. Say everybody hurt and then or everybody got a fight lined up and then they need somebody to step in against Davidson. I'm just saying or Brandon Moreno. Bro, if you're the most hittable person in the UFC, what do you think is gonna happen? And then you you most hittable when you're trying to hit them. That fight gonna last 30 seconds, man. I'm going for uh, Nikolai.